Hey, how's it going everyone? This is Wild Lamb here. In today's Fuji Friday, I do want to talk about the X-T4, giving you some of my initial thoughts because I've got a chance to play with it for the last few days. And I know a lot of you have been asking a lot of questions, so I'm going to answer a few of them. And I'm also going to go into a little bit of detail on why I do the testing that I do for my unboxing videos because there has been a lot of questions about that too. But before I get into that, there is one thing that I do want to say, and I haven't seen it covered much. But if you buy the X-T4 here in the United States, if you go over to B&H, I have the website out, you can actually get a copy of Luminaire 4. I'll go ahead and just put it on the comments below. But it seems like if you do buy this X-T4 or a lens, you do get a free copy. So definitely check that out if you are in the United States. I'm just reading the fine print, but it looks like it's only for United States residents. For anybody who's you know not in the United States, you might want to check it out. Maybe there is a similar thing going on in your country. But let's go ahead and get into the X-T4. The first two that I do want to talk about the low light autofocusing is definitely much improved. This was something that was talked about in the leaks, but when you actually do try to do autofocus in low light, you know, whether it's in a building or just around the house, it's really fast, it's really quick, it's really consistent. It's definitely a marked improvement and I really do enjoy using it. Now that's not to say that the X-T3 couldn't do it, but at times it can be very inconsistent. But what I'm finding out with this camera is that it is almost always very consistent in those low light conditions so for anybody who's taking a lot of indoor shots and you know don't have studio lighting when you're taking your pictures I think the X-T4 will really surprise you on what it's capable of doing the next thing that I do want to talk about and this is something that people have talked about but this particular detail I don't think anybody's really talked about which is the shutter is actually very silent and it is very capable of you know you using it in you know moments where you don't want the shutter to be very loud like in weddings or at an event when somebody's speaking I'll go ahead and just do a quick click for you so if you can hear it it is very quiet but one of the things that I did notice and this is something that my friends have said is that if you do hear it it sounds very weird it doesn't sound like a normal shutter click so if somebody does hear it you most likely will attract their attention and they will notice because it's kind of like a double shutter sound it's like a ka-chunk ka-chunk and it kind of just blends together a little bit. So it is definitely quiet, but it's also a little bit, I don't know, it's a very unique shutter sound. But overall, I think it's a really good shutter, and I think you really will enjoy using it. And of course, Fujifilms also said that it's also much more durable. Now, when it comes to video, which is something that I concentrate on in this particular channel, what I really love is that when you actually flip over to the video settings, you now get significantly more options into the menu settings and it's really well split out and there's a lot of things that you can really configure. As a video user, I think you'll be really excited once you dive into the menu system. I've only been diving into parts of it and I'm already really excited to show you some of the bits in other videos. Now, in terms of ergonomics, and this is something I'll just touch very quickly on, really when you get the camera in hands, it feels very familiar it is a little bit thicker it's a little bit bulkier and there is definitely a little bit more weight but it does feel very comfortable in hand and they did a really good job of rounding the bottom of it so that even though it is a bit heavier in your hand because of these rounded bottoms it's still as comfortable as they can actually make it and it really doesn't dig into your palm so really nothing ergonomically that I have anything to gripe about. Now, I personally don't like these covers because I'm always using the audio jack, but that's really nitpicking and it's not something that I'm worried about. One thing that I would like to say, and this might be just for me, is that the dial back here, this one I usually almost always avoid on my X-T3 because I had a hard time actually using this dial. I always had to dig in really far and I couldn't ever get it to work. So I pretty much just used it as a button so you can actually click it as a button. That's all I would use it for. But on the X-T4, it's actually very easy to use the dial, but it's not so loose that you might accidentally, you know, rotate it. You still have to apply a little bit of force, but it's much easier to use. It's very similar to the one that you would find in the front now. So I can use both of these pretty easily. So that's something that I do really appreciate. Now, one thing that I would love to see improved, and this is something that they probably couldn't do for this camera, but I'm hoping they would do something in probably like maybe the X-T40 or the X-T5, which is when you flip over to the video settings, 
the knob over here is basically not used. This is where you can go to HDR, continuous low, single, or continuous high. What I would love to see here is that they actually make this dial useful for video as well. So you have single, continuous low, continuous high. So a lot of people already know what that is. You can have single shot or continuous low, which means like five frames per second or continuous high, which is somewhere around like 10 to 15 frames per second. So everybody knows that. What I would love to see is this to be turned into like C1, C2, C3. And by default, when you're in photography mode, it would be single, continuous low, continuous high. But when you switch it over to movie mode, now you have three custom settings that you can set. So you can set C1 custom 1 to 4K, C2, which is custom 2 to 1080p, and C3 to slow motion. And it would just make this dial much more useful and it would really make pretty much all the dials at that point on the Fujifilm system to be very hybrid friendly because right now we really lose a lot of functionality on this side of the camera when you're in movie mode. By doing something like that, you really do expand the flexibility of what we can do while we're in video mode. So hopefully that's something that they will consider. In fact, really on this camera right here, if they were just to make single continuous low continuous high into custom one, custom two and custom three, you know, when you're in video mode, I'd be very happy with that. You don't really need to change the moniker, but I would love to have that type of functionality on the video side to really make that dial work over on the video side. So I'm going to go ahead and move on because I really don't want to make this video too long and this is kind of just my initial impressions because I've only had this camera for a couple of days but a couple of you had questions about my unboxing video yes the IBIS was on and so was the OIS I did go through the menu systems to make sure that everything was on when it comes to stabilization because there are a few other settings in here that I thought about turning on but I decided to leave it at the default because I wanted to leave as many settings as I could on the default for my camera, when I actually got it, OIS and IBIS was already turned on by default. Now, there was a few questions about the 18 to 55 seems to be stabilizing better than the 16 to 80. And personally, when I went ahead and looked through the video footage, I agree with that assessment. And this goes along to what I've said in my other videos, which is IBIS is a great technology. OIS is a great technology, but that doesn't mean that they always play well together. And sometimes it does take quite a bit of tweaking for Fuji films to get it working well for all lenses. Consistency across the entire Fuji line of camera lenses, I bet you it's going to be really difficult because as I go through and test all the lenses, I guarantee you there's going to be some lenses that's going to work really well with IBIS and there are going to be some lenses that aren't going to work very well with IBIS. This is something as an early adapter that you're just going to have to take into account and also give feedback to Fuji Films on which lenses need improvement. Now the last thing that I do want to cover was at the very end of my unboxing videos, I used a clip where my arm was getting tired and the video was very shaky and the reason why I used that one because I actually had quite a few to select from right because most people when they vlog they do it more than once and right and they usually take the best clip for that particular scenario I didn't actually take the best clip I actually took the most shaky clip because it kind of shows you that these cameras aren't perfect they aren't miracle workers you know you're still going to have to be pretty good at your craft in order to get it to work and if you're tired or if you're not on your game it's not going to be able to cover up every mistake. And that's what I was trying to show. Timothy, one of the commenters, and he was absolutely right. He said, there's no way I would use that clip. And I absolutely agree with him. And that's the reason why I chose that clip. It's not because that was the only clip I had because it's pretty easy to go back outside and redo a clip. What I was trying to show you is that there is no such thing as a perfect camera and it can only do so much. You still have to be good at your craft or care about your craft. But when you're vlogging, a lot of times you're really in a hurry and you're trying to capture that moment. And a lot of times you're not going to be perfect and you might not be able to go back and recapture that clip because the moment has already passed. So in those moments, you know, you can only get the best that you can. And this goes in line with how I want to review my cameras, which is I'm not trying to be perfect. I'm not trying to sell you a camera. What I'm trying to show you is what can an average person do right out of the box with all of these settings in auto, 
what can you expect to get and that's what I want to show you and this pretty much goes in line with what I'm trying to do with my YouTube channel which is I'm really not trying to make this into a job or make this into a review channel in which case you know I'm getting a review copies have to sign NDAs build relationships with Fuji films I really don't want to do that because what I want to be able to do is be able to create vlogging videos like that where it's not going to show the camera in its best light and I'm very comfortable with that because I'm not trying to keep a good relationship with Fuji Films. I have no contact with them, which basically allows me to speculate all I want, talk about rumors, talk about leaks. It gives me a high degree of freedom. I'm just another person on the internet that enjoys the same thing you do. I'm making videos. Hopefully it's entertaining if you're watching them. I hope you enjoy them. I hope you're a part of the community and I would love to talk to you in the comments below. I definitely don't want YouTube as a job. It's way too inconsistent. There's a whole lot of garbage that you have to put up with and it's not for me. But I do like making content. I do like talking about things that I enjoy. So if you made it this far into the video, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being a part of the community. Definitely give your feedback on what you think about the X-T4. I would love to read your opinions. I read pretty much everything. I keep the comments very clean. Anyhow, that's all I have. Thank you so much once again, and I'll see you in the next video.